Welcome everyone, my name is Terry, and today in my lab we are talking about the personal side of Microsoft Bookings. That's right, Microsoft Bookings has two ways to deploy it. One, as an individual booking space for yourself, and then two, as a lightweight CRM that's just included with most Microsoft 365 subscriptions. In this video, we are going over the personal option. If you're saying to yourself, hey Terry, I really wanna know about that lightweight CRM solution that you're talking about here. I don't have the time for Dynamics or Salesforce right now. Don't worry, I got you covered. There's a video linked somewhere around here and down in the description that goes all over that video. So if you want, go watch that video, then come back to this one or watch this video and then go to that one. Either way, let's dive into the personal side of Microsoft bookings. We've all been there before. You're working with your coworker or a vendor and then they say the magic words. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss yeah, some project or work. Then the dance starts. Send me some times I work for you. Okay, here's 15 times that I'm available. Oh, I'm sorry, none of those times work for me. How about this time? Nope, that doesn't work for me either. How about, and round and round it goes. It's a minimum of three emails back and forth to get one of these meetings scheduled. And you might be thinking, hey, Derry, why don't you just take the lead? If it's an internal meeting, use the scheduling system and throw something on their calendar. And to that I say, even though we've survived COVID and back-to-back -back meetings for years on end, there's still a large group of people who insist on having meetings for everything. And at least a subsection of that group of people can't keep their calendars up to date. What? Tell me I'm wrong. You all just thought of somebody in your office that does that. Leave me a comment down below if you think I'm wrong. And... Actually, don't leave me a comment if you thought of somebody. I have coworkers who watch my videos, so that could get a little weird right now. Anyways, let's dive into the configuration so we can put the onus of scheduling the meeting on the person who wants the meeting. Bookings is included with Microsoft 365 Business Basic, you know, the $6 per user per month plan, and higher, and also included in the frontline worker plans as well. If you have email and Teams set up in your environment already, then Bookings is ready to go. To get to Microsoft Bookings, you got three options. You can go to the myapps.microsoft.com portal and click on Bookings. You can go to portal.office.com and click into the waffle menu to go find it. Or you can take the direct route of going to outlook.office.com forward slash book with me forward slash me. Links to everything I just said will be down in the description below. After you configure your personal page, a app will show up in Outlook as well. So then if you need to make changes to your bookings offering, you can do it all from inside Outlook instead of going to the web browser. Once you're at the bookings page, you have two options, a personal bookings page and a shared pages. If you have pages shared with you and you just didn't know it yet, they'll be listed down there. Otherwise, everything about the shared pages, I'm gonna leave in that second video that I mentioned during the introduction of this video. Click on go to my bookings page to set up your bookings options. You have two options, public and private. Public options show to anybody that clicks on the link and are sign up -able. Is that a word, sign up -able? Can be used by anyone who goes to that page. Private are only accessible via a link that you distribute either email or Teams message or something like that. Let's go through the process of making a personal bookings option as if you're a customer service representative trying to provide a 30 minute session to your clients. For the title, let's call this 30 minute customer session. And if you're the type of person who likes to color code things, you can go ahead and assign a color and then it'll stand out on your calendar. For description, let's say 30 minute ad hoc customer Q&A session, touch base or account review. In this example, we'll leave it as a Teams meeting for 30 minutes. Leave the public option selected. But if this is a spot where you pick the wrong type initially, you could change it instead of having to start all over. And if needed, you can double check your working hours as well. Working hours are pulled from your Outlook mailbox and you can update them as needed by clicking on the link. That is the basic config. There is advanced options here as you can see, but we will touch on those in a moment here. Now I'll run through the process of creating a private link really fast here. It's basically identical, so let's go through it real quick. After you save the private link, you have a couple of options. You can copy the link, you can copy a single use link for a one-time appointment, or you can click on share, which then bookings becomes the middleman to send out the link to 
people as well. I used the customer support example to set these up here, but managers could easily do this for touch bases with their direct report, or you can make a special one for vendors that you might want to assign that category of green since most of the time when vendors reach out, they want more money. However you want to organize your workflow for meetings and color code them, the options are all here built in automatically. That's the basics of setting up personal bookings pages. You just go through all the scenarios that you want to build out and you're done basically. Now let's get into the customizations on how to tweak these meetings a little bit more for your specific needs. Since we're on the page, let's just start with the basics of converting the type of bookings option is from public to private or private to public. Uh, if you create a, a bookings option or something needs to change, then you just click on the three dots and then you'll see that the opposite type of bookings page or bookings option will be listed there. So public can become private or private can become public. The advantage of just converting it is if you have any existing meetings or meeting histories, all that history and those pending appointments will just move with it versus having to reschedule items if you delete it. And to add a touch of personality here, you can go edit your banner image as well. Microsoft just randomly picks one for you, but they do have 10 options available. So you can click the one that lines up best for you. Unfortunately, there is no option to add a custom one. And your profile picture. If you haven't uploaded your profile picture yet, this should just have your initials in it. You can go ahead and uh, click on your profile at the top right of the screen and then click on the image to upload a new image. Depending upon some of the security items set up, you may or may not need to get IT involved or you may have a third party solution set up already to take care of this part for you. And updating your profile picture can take up to 72 hours to fully replicate around all of Microsoft 365. Lastly, let's discuss the advanced options of your bookings options. This is configurable on a per bookings entity basis. So make sure you are aware of what adding buffer times on some versus others could do or be consistent and add buffer times on meetings on all of them. Under the bookings option, click on advanced options. You can create buffer times before and after a session to negate the back to back to back to back to back meeting cycle. Then in turn, you can also specify your minimum and maximum lead times on uh, meetings as well. The last piece of the advanced option is email reminders and post meeting email notifications. If you want to configure email uh, reminders, this is particularly useful in a customer service situation. You can set these reminders up to send out before the meeting starts. And then after the meeting is finished, you can send out a post meeting email as well. You know, it can be as basic as thanks for meeting with me. Feel free to you know, reach out if you have any other questions or if you're in a customer service situation, you can link a Microsoft Forms feedback survey in there as well. It depends on how you operate, how your business operates and how you want to use bookings long term. Now that bookings is configured, how would you use it? And I'm going to try and answer this one from both sides of the coin. So obviously internal department to department, that type of thing, it can just streamline many conversations. It can keep things top of mind so you don't forget about it and then hear about how it never happened and playing the blame game six months down the road, whatever the case may be. You just set it up. You have some standard meeting options. Whoever's requesting that meeting, you just say, yep, click the link, pick a time that works for you. I'll be there. Same thing on the sales side or customer service side. If you make it easy for your customers to contact you, then that's going to improve that relationship. It will make things easier to buy in the future, you know, upsells and warranty renewals or just support renewals. It is surprising how many companies are impossible to get a hold of outside of that renewal period. It's just mind boggling that double edged sword that some companies have. And also when I said that, how many of you thought of a, a not so great vendor? Leave me a comment down below. Let's see if there's any common poor vendors out there amongst the, the YouTube audience here. That is the personal side of Microsoft bookings. Uh, it's pretty straightforward again, just create your public and private meeting options. And then the people who want to schedule meetings with you, you can put the onus on them to schedule it. 
Just say, click the link in my email signature. If they schedule the meeting, then you're good to go. And if they don't schedule the meeting, then it really wasn't that important. You didn't need to have it anyways. As I mentioned before, if you've watched this whole thing and you're really looking for the lightweight CRM version, those shared pages of Microsoft Bookings, the link is down below. Um, and if you watch this entire video and was looking for that, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you think I've earned it. And until next time, keep building.